Welcome back, third grade artists. In this video is part two for your Yayoi Kusama project. You're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna explain the step-by-step -step how to for making your still life. So I'm gonna go through the slides and actually after you watch this video, you can open the slides and go through them yourself one by one as you work on the project because the slides are designed to keep open at your computer at your workspace so that you can remember what to do um, as you work on your project. Now first of all the materials that you're gonna need. These materials under required everybody needs and these materials are optional. So for this project, you're going to need a picture of a pumpkin or other vegetable, something like that, that you like, or the actual object. Um, like, for example, you could have a, a green pepper with you to draw. You'll need paper and a pencil and eraser and a pen or Sharpie or black marker. Um, Sharpie would work really awesome for this project if you have Sharpie. That's what I used. But if you don't have Sharpie, it's okay. And over here to color it with, I used markers or you could use whatever of these options you have to color with. Now let's get started. So first of all, you're gonna want to have a picture to look at of a pumpkin or something like that. And then you're gonna sketch it. Nice and big, take your time, look closely, notice what do the lines of the edges do, does it have different sections or parts that stick out or, or go back in and, and sketch even a little bit what happens inside. And then after you sketch it and you like how it is, so start putting the dots. Over here you can see that um, the biggest dots go in the places that pop forward. So here on Yayoi's and also here on mine, I started putting my biggest dots first because I want it to look kind of 3D at the end. And then once you get your biggest dots on there, let's move on. Step three, you're gonna start putting medium dots with pencil still. And notice that they kind of go in a line and the medium dots go next to the big dots. And then little tiny dots are gonna go after that. But start filling in where you want your dots so you know what you're gonna do when you color. Now after this, after you draw the dots with pencil, what you do next depends on if you have a Sharpie or not. If you have a Sharpie, you can follow along with the steps that I'm gonna show. If you don't have a Sharpie, I'm going to stop right here, color everything with your bright color, with your yellow or blue or your bright color, and then you're going to go back and do the spots at the end. So think about if you have a Sharpie or not. If you have a Sharpie, you can continue with me in this order. So here, I started doing my spots with Sharpie outlining them, outlining the pumpkin so I know um, exactly what's going to be where. And I did the big and medium circles. I don't need to do the littlest circles um, yet. And then on the, the next step, step five, I filled them in. Remember, if you don't have Sharpie, you're not going to be doing this yet until you've colored the pumpkin. Step six is kind of fun. It's the stem. Notice that with the stem, it's opposite. So here you drew the outside of the spots and then you color in the background and you leave the spots empty to be colored with your bright color. And then let's move on. So I took a, a moment, step seven, to erase the pencil. Again, do this if you have Sharpie. If you don't have Sharpie, you're not going to do this. And step eight is to color it in. If you had Sharpie, the fun thing here is that you can just right away go ahead and color everything on top of the spots 
and it's almost like the spots are not even there. If you go on the slides, you can watch this video and see how I did that. So I used the side of the marker and I just very quickly um, colored everything. And you can kind of see that I went in the direction of the pumpkin, so it looked really nice. And that was a, that's a pretty quick step there. If you don't have Sharpie, you're actually going to color in first. And then you're going to go back to do the spots in these steps. So what I did last is that I started putting little tiny dots right on top. And you can go on the slides and watch this video. Um, right on top in the areas that did not pop out. And I filled up that those areas with lots of little teeny tiny dots in those open spaces that were left. So you can see on here how I did that. And those are kind of fun. I just put them right on top without drawing first. So once you have filled it up with color and dots, your object, your pumpkin or your vegetable is done and you can make a fun background. So this step is to color the background. I like to put a contrasting color, like warm with cool or something like that, and to really pop out the pumpkin. So I used opposite colors here, blue and orange are opposite. And then if you want, just to make it really finished and really fun, you can also put some designs in the background, kind of like how Yayoi on her, she has some little designs in the background like little leaf shapes or something and those are are more dark compared to her pumpkin but it's up to you how you want to do that and so I went ahead and added some designs and I used a, a paper as a straight edge to draw some straight lines and then I decorated with some patterns in the background. So you can add whatever you want in the background if you want to add patterns, if you want to add shapes. But in order for your pumpkin to pop out, the thing that you do in the background should be different from how you decorated your pumpkin. So if you have circles on your pumpkin, Maybe not have circles in the background, have something else, like more square shapes or triangle shapes or something different for contrast. Okay, so I hope this has helped uh, understand the steps. And remember, you can keep the steps open as you're working to help you. And so when you are done, the way that you share it with me is the same as we've been doing with your Google folder. So here it explains some uh, reflection questions you can do in your head and then um, here how to turn it in. So make sure you take a nice photo of it and then put it in your Google folder. All right, so I know this has been kind of long, but I wanted to make sure that you can do the step by step by yourself. And so hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions for me as you're working, remember to reach out with a live chat or you can also send me an email. You can also schedule a Zoom call with me so that I can help you as you're working on, on this. And remember as well that this activity is optional this week after you finish your week seven responding assignment for Yayoi Kusama. All right, I hope you enjoy and I'm excited to see how your still life inspired by Yayoi turns out. I'm sure these are going to be super creative and colorful. So I will wait for you to submit those and I hope you have a nice time working on them. Bye-bye.